We've known about Fuchsia OS for a while now, Google's new, exciting, different operating system that some people are calling the Android killer. Well, Google pretty much refused to acknowledge that it even existed, until now. They have just lifted the lid almost entirely by going live with the Fuchsia OS developer site. And before we get into that, let's take a quick look at the UI itself. So this is a super early developer preview running on the Google Pixel Book. This demo lets you take a look at how the software might look on a smartphone as well as a laptop, and you'll notice a few things. It seems to really embody material design. Every pop-up has this card style, not too dissimilar from recent versions of Android. There's a demo application of this rotating shape, and you'll notice when it's minimized, the app is not just holding its place, but running simultaneously. The multitasking generally looks kind of amazing. It's looking like you'll be able to have five or 10 windows at a time, functioning in whatever space you like, and you can even drag one on top of the other to enter tabbed mode. So that's the ability to still still run apps in full screen, whilst also being able to seamlessly switch between them, like tabs in your browser. Anyways, there are hints all over the place that Fuchsia has big goals. If nothing else, the name itself, Fuchsia, is a color, and it's a combination between pink and purple. Pink being Apple's codename for a potential Mac operating system, and purple being their codename for what ended up becoming the iPhone. We might be reading into it too much here, but pink plus purple does suggest an operating system that spans devices of multiple form factors. But I wanted to talk about this idea that Fuchsia OS is going to kill Android, the idea that this is going to be the smartphone operating system of the future. That is definitely what the initial consensus was, but having seen what I've seen recently, I'm starting to doubt that notion, at least for the next five years. At Google I.O. this year, they had these little interviews called Fireside Chats, and this particular one with Hiroshi Lockheimer, one of the founding members of the Android team, is probably the most open conversation that's been had about it. There's a few things said here that raise some eyebrows. The first thing he says is that Fuchsia OS is an experiment. It's a concept that allows Google to test new ideas, which in itself implies that it's still in very early stages. The second thing is that Hiroshi Hiroshi completely dismisses the idea that because this is a new operating system from Google, it must be the one operating system from Google. He said that Fuchsia can happily coexist with Chrome OS and Android. And then the third thing, when afterwards asked specifically about Chrome OS, he said, we're going to be better than Mac OS and Windows. And this is important because a big part of why people assumed that Fuchsia OS was going to be a replacement is that currently Chrome OS doesn't exactly work perfectly with Android, and so it would have made sense for Google to have one unified OS. But judging by what's been said here, Chrome OS is about to become a bigger focus for Google, not a smaller one. This could all be part of a plan for them to dismiss the idea and then swoop in later and surprise us all. But I doubt it. Hiroshi was really open when asked about Fuchsia. He straight up said, We enjoy that you love the intrigue in it, but there really isn't anything to be intrigued about. It looks like whilst Fuchsia is capable of running Android apps, it has no intention of replacing Android. It's trying to coexist, to improve the capability of devices that otherwise might not be very smart at all. Okay, but there is one key difference with Fuchsia, one key advantage. It is based off a microkernel called Zircon, which compared to the Linux based Based Android has massive scalability. It is an OS that could work on anything, whether it's as powerful as your desktop PC to as low powered as your toothbrush. And this has an important implication. You might remember when the smart home was this really intriguing, really exciting prospect. That was at least five years ago. Since then, there's been surprisingly little progress for something that was supposed to be the next big thing. And I think part of what's been slowing the whole thing down is the fragmentation of software. So even right now, I'm using a bunch of smart home devices. I've got this uh, Philips Hue light bulb directly behind me. I've got these Nanoleaf Aurora panels on either side. And downstairs, I've added in a couple of LifeX smart bulbs. And by far, the biggest problem I have with all of these is that they are the opposite of seamless. The Philips Hue bulbs need a separate $50 box to work properly, the brains of the system. These Nanoleaf panels, I love them, but you're still setting them up by typing in pairing codes. And I've had a really hard time getting these to work well with my Amazon Echo. And then, as for the LifeX bulbs downstairs, without a Google Home installed, if someone wants to change the light color, without setting and syncing everything up on the LifeX application, they're out of luck. It's not a specific complaint with these bulbs, it's the market in general. But it's looking like Fuchsia can change this. 
It could shift even small-scale devices like bulbs from being dependent on some sort of hub or application to being completely independent smart devices that just need a power supply. I think it's all pretty exciting. Anyways, as I mentioned at the start, Google has just published a brand new Fuchsia website. Pretty simple looking, but nonetheless massively meaningful. It is trying to get developers involved by literally giving instructions on how to build apps for it, as well as a searchable directory so they can get to grips with its new capabilities. As we already know, know, bringing in third-party developers and being really developer-friendly is completely crucial for a sustainable platform. And so the fact that Google is doing this, they're making all this effort, is strong indication that this is not just a side throwaway project. It's a really big part of Google's future. If you enjoy this video, then I've got plenty more smartphone news content like this. So do consider subscribing to the Mr. Who's the Boss channel. My name is Aaron, and I will catch you in the next one.